Okay, so let's get going. So in the previous lesson, we basically did two types of questions. The one is finding an unknown side when you're given a right angle triangle, and the other one was finding an unknown angle. So I want everyone to try and find the length of the side AB in this triangle. And then I want you to find the size of the angle X. And I want you to think back to, again, the last lesson or grade 10 trigonometry and ask yourself, can I set out, can I do that uh, relatively easily? So let's just give you two minutes, give it a go. And then once you've got your answer, you can put it in the chat or you can um, pop your hand up and tell us how you did it. But it's always good to make sure the foundations are good. And while you do that, I'm going to grab a calculator. So keep those answers coming in the chat. That's awesome. So what I often do is I, you don't have to label them like this, but oh, I used the wrong, did I use the right? No, it's, it's O and A. So I should be using, I want, O and I've given A and the trig ratio that involves that is tan of 25, which is going to be AB over 12. And so AB should be 5.6 um, if we round off to one decimal place centimeters. Okay, so that is how we would find an unknown side. Notice how the opposite is opposite the angle that we are using as our reference angle. So that's awesome. Now, there's a slightly different way of doing the second one because we're not finding sides, we're finding an angle. So let's see if you can do that one. So if this is my angle X, that would be O, and this would be H. And I'm not writing out the Sokotoa uh, acronym that I wrote in the previous lesson, but I'm pretty confident that sine will be involved here. And so sine of X is equal to 5 over 7. And this is what we call a simple trig equation. And if we want to get X, we have to use inverse sine or arc sine to undo the sine that's here already. And so then we get X is equal to inverse sine of five over seven. And we should get for that 45.58, uh, or if you're rounding off to one decimal place, 45.6. So these are, this is a fundamental skill that you always need. And from what I can see in the chat, um, those skills seem to be mastered. Let's do a quick little vote. Thumbs up if you feel confident with these two things. Thumbs down if you feel somewhat unsure. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so as we go into grade 11 trig, there are a couple of different question types that we have to encounter. And so I just want to make sure that I... Kind of just preview them a little bit. We're not going to do all of them tonight, but just have a quick look through what they might look like. Uh, so the first one is calculate the value of a trig expression without using a calculator. And I'm going to do some work on that in a moment. And we use something called 
special triangles and we also use the reduction formula. Then the second type of question would be express trig ratio in terms of the given variable. We'll also come across that at a later stage. Also can involve the reduction formula and things like that. Uh, reduction and also special triangles. Um, simplifying a trig expression, uh, this often will use something called the reduction formula, or it may also use something called an identity. Then there are questions that deal with proving a given identity. And then the last one is solving trig equations, but we talk about things called general solutions. So we're not going to do like everything in super detail, but this is sort of the broad grade 11 trig part that is not, or is sort of trig part one. Okay, so let us talk a little bit about special triangles. I don't know if anybody, if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this, they can. I will show it in later lessons as well, but it's nice to know kind of what we're trying to chip away at. Also, trig graphs will come into it. So trig graphs will come into general solutions and trig graphs also come into the reduction and special triangles, et cetera. Okay, so what we need to do is we need a way of evaluating some of the special angles like cos 30, cos 60, and tan 45 easily. And so without using a calculator, we need something to base that on. So let's start with a square. And a square, which has length one all the way around, and a square will always have angles that are 90. I want everyone to work out what the length of the diagonal is on the square. So work it out for me and you can pop it in the chat. What's the length of that diagonal over there? What could be used to work out the length of the diagonal? We do actually need to acknowledge that this is a right angle. Maps, I totally agree with you. It's Pythagoras, our old friend. So tell me what Pythagoras says about the length of the diagonal. I'll call it D for diagonal. How about that? Yeah, I think it's going to be root 2. Let's just do the math to make sure everyone sees where we're going with this. So one squared is one, and another one would be two is d squared, and then square root two would be d. And so I'm going to write square root two on the, the main diagonal. But now I want to ask another question. What is or what are the size of these red dots over here? What size are those red dots over there? So I'm talking uh, Beverly and uh, Rafense and Ngani, everyone is saying 45. And I think the reason you guys know these have to be 45 is that this diagonal is cutting the square in half. It's hot. These are congruent triangles. And so cutting 19 and a half, this has to be 45. And then for the same reason, this has to be 45. Uh, or you could say for some of angles in a triangle, it would be, be 45. Now, this is fantastic news because this gives us a triangle um, that can be used for all trig ratios where 45 is involved. So this special triangle, I call it the 45 special triangle, looks like this. And or you could draw it the other way around if you like too. You have a right angle, 45, 45, one, one, sorry, one, one, root two. Now, using this triangle that we know exists, I want you to work out what the sine of 45, but this is without your calculator. Without your calculator, I want you 
to tell me what the value of each of those is. I'll call that A, B, and C. And the only thing you've got to go on is this special triangle. And you can, if you feel like you know and you're willing to explain to us, that would be awesome. Otherwise, you can pop it in the chat. What do you think these values are going to be? So sine of 45, I have to choose the 45 as the reference angle. So I'll make that O, I'll make that H, and I'll make this A. So for the sine of 45, I'm going to get 1 over root 2. Now, sometimes in your calculators, they write it as root 2 over 2, but that is equivalent to 1 over root 2. And because we're using this special triangle, I think it's probably better to, you know, that's a calculated thing. And this question is meant to be without calculators. Now, what is B going to be? Well, because this is an isosceles triangle and because A is also one, the cos of 45 is going to be one over root two. Yeah, exactly. And what about the tan of 45? What's that going to be? So the tan of 45 is over A, so it's going to be 1 over 1, or just 1. And you can check these on your calculator, but you know, essentially what we do is when they have these questions where they say, you may not use your calculator, but you have to evaluate them. If you have special angles that come up like 30 or 60 and 45, you just use a special triangle. And so the first special triangle that we've learned today is this one and you do need to memorize it and every time you use this you write it on your page to justify why you knew these values were what they were give me a thumbs up if you feel comfortable with the special triangle and you understand how to use it give me a thumbs down if you feel a bit uncertain i'll wait a moment as the class expresses their opinion So for Tando, um, if we look at the where this came from is it's a square and we cut it in half and we used Pythagoras to figure out that the diagonal is root two. And what I then did is I took the piece over here, we took the triangle out and we made a, we just basically called this a special triangle. And then I said, well, if, if this is the reference angle, this must be O. This must be A and this must be H. And so for the sine of 45, it's just going to be O over H or 1 over root 2. So that's 1 over root 2. And then for, let's say for tan, let's focus on tan. Tan normally is O over A. So what is O in the special triangle? It's just going to be 1. What is A in the special triangle? It's also just 1. And so the tan of 45 is in fact one. And so we didn't even need our calculators to work out what the value of these special um, triangles were. Now, as I look through the chat, it's asking, do we rationalize the denominator? No, we don't have to rationalize the denominator. That is a specific request that has to be made before we do it. If you put it in your calculator, it will rationalize it. But this question is not, with, it's, if you go back to, that question I asked you about earlier on, it says here, calculate the value of a trig expression without using your calculator. And so that's why you need this tool in your toolkit. You write down the special triangle. Now, how do we know that that is the reference triangle, the reference angle? That's a good question. It can't be the 90. And so even if we chose the other 45 as the reference angle, you would still get the same answer. I'll show you in the next special triangle when it's what happens when they're different. 
but you'll, you'll see it, it'll make a lot more sense after we do the next one. So let's go to the next one now. So the other special triangle or special angle that you need to know about is 30 and 60. So where do we get a triangle to help us with that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a equilateral triangle. And in my equilateral triangle, I know it doesn't look like an equilateral, but you can trust me, the lengths are two. What are the angles in an equilateral triangle? What are the size of these angles over here? Any ideas? So, and Tokazi and Sonic, everyone is saying 60 and you're 100% correct. We know for, that these are 60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to write in 60 over here. Now, if I've cut it in half and it's going to be perpendicular, it's going to be at a right angle. I want to know what is the length of the blue bit over here? What's the length of the blue bit over there? Well, since we cut it in half, it has to be one. Yeah, no problem there. And then what about this black dot up here? What does this have to be? Let's see it in the chat. What does that have to be? Well, because it's sum of angles in a triangle, this is going to be 30. Okay. Now, the good news is we have just developed another special triangle. So let's go like this. We'll make this 90, we'll make this 60, we'll make this 30. But we know this is two, we know this is one. What we don't know yet is the height. Does anybody have an idea of how we can work out the height? Who would like to come on and tell me audibly what, how I'd work out the height here? Let's go to Natalie or Natalie. Can we unmute? What what idea could we use to to find H here? Um, so since um, the the triangle is been cut in half, the height of this Pythagorean of this um, triangle we will yeah. use Pythagoras to calculate it because it's now the hypotenuse. Uh, the I mean, the height. we minus the the two the two squared uh, minus one squared, and we get the other side. In the ah, square root. Love it. What did you get? I got uh, three root, root yep. three. Perfect. So thank you so much, Natalie or Natalie. Um, you, what Natalie said was that we use the theorem of Pythagoras and we say that two is the hypotenuse and one is going to be the length of the bottom. And so we find that this over here is going to be root three. Now we have another special triangle. So using just the triangle and not your calculator, I want you to work out what the sine of 30 and is for me. So what is the sine of 30 using this special triangle? Remember, no calculators here. So I'm looking at my triangle, and since I know the angle, the reference angle is 30, I need to make this the reference angle here, which makes this the O. Well, let me choose a different color. This is O, this is H, and this is A. So the sine of 30 should be O over H, which is a half. And we didn't even need our calculators. Now, I want to know what is the cos of 30 and what is the tan of 30. So I'll, I'll give you labels like this, A, B, and C. And again, I want you to use, without your calculator, I want you to evaluate what the cos of 30 is. Let me go turn my lights on in the back.
So for the cos of 30, it's going to be a over h or root 3 over 2. So that makes sense to me. And what about the tan of 30? So the tan should just be over A, and that's going to be 1 over root 3. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to this triangle, that I, the special triangle that I know exists, and I'm just using it to get these values without a calculator. And that's why I write it on my page whenever I do it. Now, I'm going to be a bit sneaky. I'm going to say... I want to now know the value of the sine of 60. And I want you to try and use the special triangle. What is the sine of 60? And again, no calculators are allowed here. Now we have to be careful because if 60 is the reference angle, then this is going to be in the driving seat. And that is going to mean that the way that we name our sides, so this is going to be uh, O. This is still H. It doesn't move, but this now becomes A because we're talking about 60. And so what you should get is sine is O over H which means that we should get root three over two. Now, using that same idea that I just showed you, I want you to work out what the sine of six, what the cos of 60 and what the tan of 60 is. Keep it coming, people. I can see the chat is lighting up with your participation. So for cos, I need A over H. So I'm going to get 1 over 2. And for the tan of 60, I get O over A, which is root 3 over 1. Very cool. Very, very cool. So what have we done in the first half of the lesson today? We've learned about two types of special triangles. So let me draw them again one more time just to make sure that everyone has them in their locker. So we put our right angle in like this. Uh, we know for the first one that it was 1, 1, root 2, and this is 45, and this is 45. And then for this one, that was 60, that was 1, that was 2, that was root 3, and that's 30. And if you have these triangles, you can find the, the value of a trig ratio for any of these special triangles and special angles using these triangles. And that was the point of the first half of the lesson. So just give me a quick thumbs up if you're feeling okay, thumbs down if you're feeling unsure about this content. Okay, awesome. I think you did very well. I'm very impressed. Now, we've been going for half an hour, and I think what our bodies are craving is a bit of uh, kind of standing up and blood flow and et cetera, et cetera. So let's stand up together and turn on your cameras. I wanna see all your lovely faces. I want to see the, the energy in the room. And I want to start with, um, let's start with just a little bit of shaking our hands. And let's start with a bit of a twist. So we start slowly and we were rotating. And then as our bodies relax, you'll find that you rotate from your hips a bit more. Okay, so that's part one. Then what I want you to do, 
is I want you to take your arms and put them out sort of almost horizontally and start with small circles. And then slightly bigger circles. And then the biggest circles. So that your shoulders are kind of unwinding. Okay, then let us do a stretch. So like this. And then let's switch it up. Okay. And then what we can do is we can roll our shoulders back. So just roll them back. And look out straight in front of you and then roll them forward. Two. Okay. And then let's just stretch our necks out. So one to five seconds to the left. And then five seconds to the right. And sometimes you'll hear some clicking. Okay, and then what we need is something to get our heart rates up. So you can choose the exercise for today. Um, we have a choice of uh, jumping jacks, we can do uh, sort of knee ups, uh, or we can do something that anyone suggests, as long as it gets our heart rate up. So what do you, what's it going to be? Oh, squats. <laughs> squats. Okay. You, no, okay, cool. I can do that. Okay, so put your, we'll do sports. Well, no, we'll do squats. Okay, put your hands out in front. Let's do squats. Fine. Okay. And what you do is you just drop down one. And then tense your stomach muscles. Two, three, four. <laughs> Everyone's five. complaining about the first okay. choice. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go for um okay, we're not gonna do mountain climbers because that's too hard. Now let's just do jumping jacks. Let's do 10 jumping jacks. Okay. Three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Give me five more. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and sit down. That was good. Um, I, I thought of another one called mountain climbers, which are hectic exercises. But the problem is the my camera, I don't know if I'll be able to get on the ground and get up again afterwards, which kind of spoil the second half of the lesson so i'll wait for that why try that um so let's go to did the stretching let us try and play a bit of math 24. so here is a card and there are four numbers and you have to try and make 24 using all four numbers just once and you can only use the operations plus, minus, times, divide, or brackets. See if you can make 24. <laughs> yeah, I am a little bit out of breath, but that is the point. The point is to get our blood moving and... Um... <laughs> I'm only seeing all these little emojis now. Um... Yeah. Okay, let's try and do this. Can we get to 24? Who thinks they know the answer? So Six times four, I think this is a nine, hey, because the, the line's at the bottom. But six, um, so this is a nine. So what could we do? So what do we have? So four times five is one way of starting. We could get 20 like that. And then so you get close that would give us if we were in 20 plus 9 minus 3 we get 26 so it's not quite there but i i like your thinking uh what about 
Hmm. So five, three is 15, 19, six, no. Anybody have any good ideas? Did I choose like the hardest ones in the whole um, pack today? So seven, three times plus four is seven, seven times five. So I was thinking, I actually haven't done these before. I just choose them randomly. So I'm doing them like you. Uh, what about three times four is 12? And then well, I also don't quite get there. Hmm. What about your? <laughs> it's good to have some mystery. Wait, I think someone's got it. Nine minus. Okay, no, but Rafensky, the problem is. Nine minus five gives us four, but then we need to get that to, yeah, it's not going to quite work. Three times five plus nine, that's 24. The problem is we meant to use all three items. Let me check this one. So Oratile, I think your one is the best so far in that three times five is 15 plus nine gives us 24. Um, but now, if we think about bod mass, Rafensia, what do you, nine minus five, three times five? Aha, wait. No, okay. I'm not going to go too deep on this because this is getting me as well. Um, but we can come back to it in the next lesson. But for the moment, I can only see a way of getting it with three things. Uh, and so I'm going to pause for there unless any other student has a... Uh, answer that they can suggest. Maybe take a screenshot and you can we can see if by the next lesson anyone has figured it out. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time to take a screenshot and then we're gonna start second bit. Okay, three, two, one. All right, let's go back to our learning. So I want to shift our focus now to a graph. And I want to ask what type of graph, sorry, I jumped down there. What type of graph is this one? What type of trig graph is this? Okay, it's the sine graph, yes. So it goes up. And for the sine graph, what we have is we have angles as the inputs. So you can see the values all the way from 0 to 360 as the inputs. And then the Y values go as high as one. It seems to be the highest value. And then the lowest value seems to be minus one. So that's kind of what we're playing with. The input is an angle. The output is a value. And the highest value is one. The lowest is minus one. And then these are all angles. And they give us this graph. Now, I want to ask you this question. Which value of the four here is equal to the sine of 30. And I want you to look at the graph and see if the graph can help you. <laughs> Let's just take it step by step. We're gonna build today. So where is the sign of 30 on my graph? Let's even find where 30 is. So it looks to me like 30 would be here. And so the sign of 30 should be a half. So I'll write here, the sign of 30 is a half or 0 0.5. But that actually makes sense from the special triangle that we did not too long ago. We know that the sign of 30 is a half. So I'm happy that the two worlds collide. Now. How can we use the trig drawing to help us figure out where else? Um, so if the sine of 30 is half, we're trying to figure out what else might be equal to a half. And I was thinking I should just extend this line and ask myself, well, if that's in line with a half, what is that X value over there gonna be? So if this was, 30, it feels to me 
like this should be 150. And so we can say that the sine of 30 is equal to the sine of 150. And we can see that in the um, trig graph. And so which option should it be? I think the answer should be, so I see a couple of students here and they are saying A. So Cody has said, yep. So the answer should be A. Okay, now everyone who's uncertain, don't worry. I'm gonna go very slowly here because I know often this gets taken on very quickly in class. So let's just slow down for a second. Now I wanna ask you another question that's similar to this. If I say to you, the sine of what angle is equal to, uh, let's use a different color, minus a half or minus 0.5 is another way of saying it. Can you look at the drawing and tell me what the sign of what angle equals minus a half? Or you can put that in the, you can choose the option like A, B, C, D if you like. Um, so hang in there and see if you can figure out where that is. So if I look at my side here, minus a half is here on the y-axis and I'm gonna go across. And it feels to me like the sign of something over here. And I look at the graph and I see what's halfway between 180 and 240, it's gonna be 210. But it's also possible because I see something else. I also see that this one over here seems to be in line with minus a half. And that looks to me like 330. So when I look at the answers that are coming through in the chat, I understand why some people are saying D and some people are saying B because the sine of 210 is equal to minus a half, it seems. And the sign of 350 is also equal to minus a half. Now, just to make sure your math teacher hasn't lost his mind, why don't you go to your calculators and put in the sign of 210 and the sign of 330? And if you get minus a half, put a happy face in the chat. And if you don't get minus a half for, the, for these two, then put an unhappy face because we've got a mystery to solve then. Okay, so what we're saying here is that the sine of 210 is equal to a minus a half, and so is the sine of 330. Now, this is rather interesting because one of the ideas is that trig graphs or trig functions seem to repeat themselves. Now, when we say they repeat themselves, I mean that the sine of 30 is equal to the sine of 150. It's, it's repeated itself. The other thing that we can say is that the sine of 150 can be reduced to a smaller angle, which has the same value. So the sine of 150 can be reduced to, the, to 30, and you still get the same value. And that's really what the reduction formula is. Now, Give me, give me a thumbs up if you understand why the sine of 150 when reduced to the sine of 30 is the same value. I just want to check that that reduction makes sense to you. So you understand visually? No, okay. So if you look at the graph, you can see this green line that the sine of 30 and the sine of 150 both give a half. And so that's why we can say in, in trigon we're going to learn how to do this, but I just want to set the groundwork. The sine of 150 is the same as sine 30 because we can literally see they're in line with the same value. And we could also say that the sine of 330 could be reduced to the sine of 210, but that's not as relevant right now. Um, so, okay, so let's keep going. Now, uh, what I want to ask next is often when we talk about the reduction formula, we talk about something called the cost diagram. Uh, and so I just want to give a little preview of this. So one of the weird things that has just happened is that we have said that we can have a value for the sine of 330. But that's kind of a problem 
if you think about the fact that trigonometry has always been done in right angle triangles. So how do you have a angle in a triangle, which is 330, when you know for sure that triangles only add up to 180? Does everybody understand? Give me a thumbs up if you understand my problem. So the sign, how do you have a value for a trig function of sine of 330 if trig things, trig ratios come from triangles and triangles are only meant to add up to 180? We need a way of extending the definition of trig ratios. And so that's what I'm going to attempt to do with the cost diagram. But I just want to highlight the problem as to why just grade 10 Sokotoa won't do the job anymore because we've now dealing with um we're dealing with angles all of a sudden that are bigger than 90. Okay, so let's what we often use in the section is we use something called the cost diagram. But let's go back to our graph here. And I want us to focus on the behavior of our graph in different quadrants. So if we imagine an angle starting here at the horizontal, and we think about an angle going up to the end of the first quadrant, all the way up to here, that would be 0 to 90. Now on our graph, 0 to 90 would look like this. And I want to ask you, between 0 to 90, is the sign graph positive or negative? So tell me in the chat. So in this area over here, between 0 to 90, is the sign graph positive or negative? Okay, so it's positive, yeah. And so what we're going to say is that in quadrant one, the sign, sign is going to be positive. Okay, because quadrant one is between zero and 90. Now what's going to happen, and I know this is, I'm going to go into more detail in the next lesson, but for today I'm just laying the groundwork. If I go to the second quadrant, that would be an angle between 90 and 180. Basically, if the angle went all the way, like somewhere over here, it would go to 180. If it stopped, it would stop somewhere in there. If I look at that on the trig graph, that is going to be going from here to here. Is the sine graph positive or negative in quadrant number two? So that was Q1. This is Q2. Oh, you, you can visually see it. Eh? It's above the line. So it's going to be positive. Okay, now. If I go to quadrant three, if my angle was going to 180 and then going into this one, I'm actually going to go past 180. And the next quadrant is going to be from 180 to 270. In fact, maybe I should draw it this way. So I'm going to go like that, 270. Is the sign graph going to be positive or negative in those quadrants? Okay, it's going to be negative. So you can see in this quadrant, it's negative. So here it's positive, positive, here it's negative. And I think you can follow that the next quadrant is also going to be negative. Its sign is negative in those quadrants. Now, it's going to be zero at 360. It's going to be zero at 180. It's going to be zero over here. But anywhere in between that, sign is going to be negative. So I just want to show you how the relationship between the cost diagram and a graph. And what the graph is telling me is that between 0 and 180, sine is positive. Between 180 and 360, it's negative. Give me a thumbs up if you understand that. You understand where that came from. If it makes sense to you as to how that's working. Okay, now, if we could do that for the sine graph, wouldn't it be helpful if we could also do it for the cos graph and the tan graph, and then we'd have a summary of where the angles of where the trig ratios are positive and where they are negative. So let's have a look at the other types of graphs. So over here, the one that I've just done with you is that in quadrant one, sine is positive, positive. In quadrant two, it's positive. In the next quadrant, it's negative, and the next quadrant's negative. That's what we just did now. I want you to write out the pattern for the cos graph 
in the quadrants. So the pattern I showed you now, positive, positive, negative, negative. Now, what is the Cosgraph's pattern? Okay, it's going to be positive, negative, and then what? It's going to be negative and then positive. I should have probably done it up and above, but you get where I'm going with this. So I'll just put you a positive, negative, negative, positive. And this is the cos graph. Or the, and when we say the cos graph, we're using co the cos function to get the values. Now let's look at tan. So we've done the whole set. And let me see if I can zoom in. So what I want to do now is I want to know what is tan's um, pattern if we look at quadrants. So tan's pattern, if I look at naught to 90, it's gonna be positive, then it seems to be negative, then it seems to be positive, then it seems to be negative. Yeah. And visually, that makes a lot of sense to me. I can see the graph is above, then it's below, then it's above, then it's below. And all of these graphs are made from the trick. Okay, now, how do I bring this together? So whenever we had the first column, this was quadrant one, this was quadrant two, this was quadrant three, and this was quadrant four. And what math teachers do is they say, look, to keep track of where the different graphs are positive or negative, we use a, um, a, di a cast diagram. And we'll see what, see what this says. So if you look at quadrant number one, can you see that all the trig ratios are positive in quadrant one? And so what we do is we put an A here for all. Then... In quadrant number two, what is the only trig ratio that is positive? So that was sine, cos, and tan. What's the only trig ratio that's positive in quadrant two? Okay, so we say S, because that's the only one that's positive. In quadrant number three, what is the only one that's positive? Okay, so what we do is we write a T because that's the only one that's positive. Now, what about quadrant four? What is the only trig ratio that is positive in quadrant number four? It's cos, aha. And suddenly you see where the cost diagram comes from. So what the cost diagram says is if you have a trig ratio with an angle in the first quadrant, it will be automatically positive. If your angle is in the second quadrant, only sine will be positive, but all the other trig ratios will be negative. So let's put this to the test. In our calculators, we are going to type the sine of 150. We are going to type the cos of 150. And we are going to type the tan of 150. And my hope, my real sincere hope, is that the sine of 150 ends up being positive and that the cos of 150 ends up being negative, and the tan of 150 ends up being negative, because this is all going to be an angle in quadrant number two. If you are finding this to be true, would you give me a happy face, please, in the chat? <laughs> That's good news. This is fantastic news. Now. Let's do one more to close the lesson out. This cost diagram um, summarizes the behavior of where the three trig ratios are positive or negative. It can also help us reduce um, big or angles that are greater than 90 to acute angles. And so in the next lesson, we're going to work on the cost diagram and reducing um, angles that are bigger to smaller ones. But to end today, I want to ask you, if I say to you the sine of 210, the
the cos of 210 and the tan of 210. I want to know what the order is for that. So is it positive, negative, positive, or negative, negative, positive? Give me a three, give me this thing over here, but for the green one. I want to know, is the sine of 210 positive or negative? Is the cos of 210 positive or negative? And pop it in the chat. Everyone, you have done fantastically well. What I'm seeing in the chat is I see that because this is in quadrant, so sine of 210, if you wanted to visualize this angle, you'd have to go all the way past this and into here. And in that quadrant, only tan is positive. The other two trig ratios will be negative. And you can confirm this on your calculator. And Kirsten has suggested, uh, we can memorize all singers take cough sweets. So that is one way of memory. All singers take cough sweets. Or I've, another one I've heard is um, all stations to Cape Town. But you have to live in Cape Town to know that. <laughs> um, to Cape Town Station. There's, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can remember it. So whatever your teacher thinks is the best way, I'm happy to go with that. Um, but essentially, as long as you... Have, you know that quadrant one is, is A, and then you go STC. I'm totally happy. Okay, everyone, we've done a lot today. We did um, special angles and special triangles. We did a bit of tree graphs, and now we've looked at a little bit of the reduction formula and the cost diagram, and I think that's more than enough for one day. So, Lebo, if I could ask you to put the link to this week's quiz, um, I... Yeah, and it was great teaching you today. I hope that you got something out of the lesson. Um, and yeah, I look forward to continuing with you next week. And yeah, if you have any comments or how on how you found the lesson, let us know in the chat. We always appreciate your feedback. And on the second day of the week, we don't do a poll. So we always like to get a sense of how the students experienced the lesson. Um, but once you are ready to go, then you can click on the quiz and start the quiz. And that is it for tonight. <laughs> Mr. And, yeah. Um, will you be going through the reduction formula again in the next yes, lesson? Yes, so in the in the next lesson, I haven't really started the reduction formula. So today was just showing why I was trying to show uh in this early stage the fact that trig things do repeat themselves. So the fact that the sine of 150 is the same as the sine of 30. So there is the sense of repetition or reduction. And then the cost diagram was just about us knowing where things are positive and negative. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about how do we take, say, the sine of 210 and build a triangle in this quadrant that helps us understand what the sine of 210 can be reduced to. So that's the topic of the next lesson. All right. Thanks, Ms. Davis. Cool. All right, everyone, are there any final questions? Otherwise, I would suggest going off to do the quiz. Um, and yeah, I will continue with my journey into Trig from Monday. But I think you all did very well today. And so, yeah, well done. And yeah, thanks for your help, Lebo. I will see you. Always a pleasure, Mr.